Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on reflection in mirrors. The topic of this video is the mathematics of curved mirrors, and we want to know how do you use the so-called mirror equation to solve physics word problems, and what is magnification, and how do you use the magnification ratio to solve physics word problems. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. The mathematical relationship between the object distance, the image distance, and the focal length are given by this equation. The DO in the equation stands for the object distance, and it's the distance measured along the principal axis from where the object is located to the mirror surface. The image distance is DI in that formula, and it is measured along the principal axis from where the, op where the image is at to the mirror surface. Finally, F stands for focal length. Focal length is the distance from the focal point to the mirror as measured along the principal axis. The most difficult part about using this equation has to do with the plus minus nature of these three variables. For the object distance, it's straightforward. It's always going to be a positive value, but the image distance, di, can be either positive or negative. For real images, image distance is positive, and for virtual images that would be behind the mirror, they have negative image distances. For focal length, it's always going to be positive for a concave mirror and negative for a convex mirror. Solving a mirror equation problem requires careful reading, good conceptual reasoning, and an effective problem solving strategy. I'd like to demonstrate with our first example. Here's the problem. The first thing I'm going to do, the first step, is to read carefully. Determine the image distance for a light bulb placed 45.0 centimeters from a concave mirror having a focal length of 15.0 centimeters. The second step is to identify the given values and to express those in terms of the symbols within the equations. So I notice in the first line of 45.0 centimeter, and that sounds like the object distance. So I write DO equal 45.0 centimeters. And in the second line, I read 15.0 centimeters as the focal point, focal length. So I write F equal positive 15.0 centimeters. I use the positive because it's a concave mirror. Now, third step is to identify your unknown value, which here it says determine the image distance. So I write di, that's image distance, equal question mark. The fourth step is to identify the formula you're going to be using, which is pretty easy right now since we only have one. I write it down. And the fifth and final step is the first time we actually do any math. I'm going to take values of do and f and substitute it into this equation to solve for di. So I say 1 over 45 plus 1 over di equal 1 over 15. And I want to solve for di. So I have to isolate that di term by itself on, this, uh, on one side of the equation. So I do that by subtracting 1 over 45 from both sides. That, that gives me just 1 over di on the left side of this equation. And it gives me 1 over 15 minus 1 over 45 on the opposite side. Now I pull out my calculator and I ask it, what is 1 over 15 minus 1 over 45? And it says 0. 0.0444. Now, that's 1 over di. That's not the answer. It's 1 over the answer. So to find di, the image distance, I take the reciprocal of each side, which would give me di equal 1 over 0. 0.044. For on my calculator, it tells me that's 22.5 centimeters. Now in solving this problem, I used an effective problem solving strategy that included five steps. First, read the problem carefully. Second, I identified given values and expressed them in terms of the variable symbols of our equations. Third, I identified the unknown that variable. Fourth, I looked for an equation that related the knowns to the unknown, and I wrote it down. Fifth, I substituted numerical values into that equation, and I applied proper algebra in order to solve for my, for my unknown value. What strikes me about this strategy is that 80% of the work is done before I actually do any math. So even if you're having difficulty with mathematics, if that's kind of a natural thing for you, and you're lacking confidence, use the strategy. Get started on it. Get through the first four steps, then take a deep breath, and then crank out the math.
In my second example, I'll be using the effective problem solving strategy listed just above me in order to solve this problem. So read the problem carefully. Determine the focal length of a convex mirror that produces an image that is 16.0 centimeters behind the mirror. Careful reading now, behind the mirror, when the object is 28.5 centimeters from the mirror. So now list what you know in terms of variable symbols. And I know that 28.5 centimeters is the object distance. And the image distance is a negative 16.0 centimeters. That's where that good conceptual reasoning comes in. This is a virtual image located behind the mirror, as is always the case for convex mirrors. And so I have to list it as negative 16.0 centimeters. My unknown is the focal length, f equal question mark. And my equation or formula is the only one we we know right now, so I write it down. Okay, now I have to do the last step, with it, which is the only math step, substitute and solve. So I just have to take what I've, the work I've already done and apply it to this formula right here. So I'm going to say 1 over 28.5 plus 1 over negative 16, make sure you get the negative in there, equal 1 over f. Now I can evaluate the left side of the equation on my calculator because there's nothing but numerical values there. So I evaluate the left side and it comes out to be negative 0.0274. Now that's not f, that's 1 over f according to how this formula is written. So to find f, take the reciprocal of both sides. The reciprocal of 1 over f is f. The reciprocal of 1 over 0.0274 negative is whatever your calculator tells you, and that's negative 36.5 centimeters. Hey, look, that negative was the answer for the focal length, which means it's a convex mirror, which is what I should have gotten. If you didn't get a negative there for your focal length of a convex mirror, you know you did something wrong. You can go back and check your work. Hey, let's learn a new trick. It's called magnification. The magnification of an image tells us how many times larger the image is than the object itself. If the image ends up being two times larger than the object, then the magnification is either plus or minus two. M, magnification, equal high divided by whole. The high here is the image height, and the whole is the object height. Now it ends up that the ratio of these heights, high over whole, is equal to the negative of the ratio of the distances. So we have the equation, high whole equal negative die dough. Sounds like I'm wrapping here for a number of reasons, but we'll just have to get over it. Now once more, one of the difficult things about this is having a good handle on the sign conventions for die, dough, high, whole, and f. So for dough, it's always going to be a positive value, and the same is true for whole. The object height and object di distances are always assigned positive values. But die can be positive or negative, as we've already discussed. It's positive for real images, and it's negative for virtual images. As for the high, the image height, it's positive for upright images and negative for inverted images. The upright images are your virtual images, so you get a positive high value for upright virtual images and a negative image height for inverted real images. Finally, there's the focal length, and as we've spoken, focal lengths can be positive or negative, positive for concave mirrors, and negative for convex mirrors. Let's get started using this. Here's example three, and I'm going to use the problem solving strategy above to solve this, beginning with read carefully. A concave mirror with a focal length of 32.0 centimeters produces a 6.2 centimeter tall upright image, upright image, when the object is 18.8 centimeters from the mirror. Determine two things, the object height and the image distance. So that's my first step, read carefully. Second step, write down what you what is given. And so one thing that is given is f equal 32.0 centimeters for the focal length, that's positive. Height of the image is 6.2 centimeters, it's positive because it's an upright image. Those are positive image heights. And then finally, the object distances are always positive, and it's given here as 18.8 centimeters. I'm looking to solve for object height and the image distance. So my formulas now, I have two. And what I need to do is use one of these formulas to solve for one of my unknown, and the other formula for the other one. And if I inspect what is given, and I look at my formulas, one has three variables, one four. And I'm thinking that with what I'm given, the value of f and the value of dough, I should be able to use this first formula on the left to solve for the die value. And that's how I'm going to go about it. So I start by substituting into that formula 18.8 centimeters for the dough value and 32. 
0.0 centimeters for the F value, and I want to get the 1 over die term by itself, so I subtract 1 over 18.8 from both sides of the equation. Left side becomes 1 over die, right side becomes 1 over 32 minus 1 over 18.8. Pull out your calculator, evaluate the right side of that equation, comes out to be negative 0.0219 and some change. Now, to find the die value, you have to reciprocate both sides. I have to take the reciprocal, 1 over negative 0.0219, blah, 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 and I get four, negative 45.6 for the value of die. Now, that's a negative because this is a virtual image. I was told it was upright. The fact that it's upright means it's also virtual. That's where that conceptual reasoning becomes useful. Now, I need to solve for the other unknown value, which is whole. So that's where I'm going to use my other equation, hi ho equal negative di do. And I'm going to rearrange it to get whole by itself in the numerator uh, on one side of the equation. So my first algebra step is to take hi ho equal negative di do and flip both sides. Then after I've done that, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by hi. The equation now becomes whole equal negative hi times do divided by die. And now I can substitute everything I know, because I, I was given the value of hi, I was given the value of do, and I calculated the value of die. So I substitute that in, and I crank out my answer for the value of the object height. I know it should be positive, and it is. It's 2.5 centimeters. We'll do example four a little differently. I'm going to have you pause the video, solve this problem using the problem solving strategy we've discussed, and then when you're ready, press play and step through the solution. No narration on my part. I'll catch up with you once you're done with the solution. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could I ask you to help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are some resources, each one of which can be found on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of the video. We have a calculator pad section with several problems answers and audio guided solutions, a couple of minds on physics missions that deal with the mirror equation, and finally two tutorial pages that have to do with the mirror equation for concave and convex mirrors. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and thank you for watching.